Hi, my name is Darren Hill. This is video number three of a mini part series. Not sure how many we're doing, but we're doing our best to get something. We are talking about bees. Now, I explained to you in the previous video why we do certain boxes for certain reasons and how many frames and stuff like that. Um, there are different ways to take care of your bees when you first get them. When you get a kit from Daydant, Sorry, I'm getting out of the video. But you usually get a kit and it comes with this. This is basically a quart jar on a feeder and you stick it. You gotta lift this part up and stick it right there and that will feed your bees for a day or two. Okay? These do not last long in the summertime or whatever whenever you're feeding your bees. But it is a way and a common way to feed your hive. You want your hives to be self-sufficient, so that's why you really don't like to use feeders, but they're here because you will need them eventually. When you first get a hive, you will get, probably get you one of these, and you probably want to have to just check it every day and make sure it's full of sugar water. You basically take one part sugar, one part water, uh, and mix it together on your stove and boil it until it's clear. Let it cool off, stick it in a jar, and then you just turn it upside down and stick that on your hive. And they will find it and they will empty that in a day. This is a frame feed, frame board feeder. It takes up a space of two frames. But if you put it in here and fill that with sugar water, that will last pretty much a week. Okay. And when you do this, you usually want to take a handful of junk, leaves, twigs, and stuff, and you throw it in there. And that gives the bees something to live on. If they fall in the water, they will basically not drown because they'll have the, the coat on. Um, some people will put little pieces of mesh wire in there and that's cool, but usually if you just fill the whole top with uh, leaves and twigs and then pour your sugar water on it, they'll give them plenty of, there's plenty of them to float on. So that's fine that way. So let's get down to the bottom. Now this is not a complete bottom. This is um, when I'm finishing up building but this is for a uh, wire bottom hive, uh, bottom part of a hive. Normally this is a dirty other one but I was just having this. These have been in storage so they're dirty but I like the wire because I have a firm belief that if you do have a row of mites and that the mite falls off a bee it'll fall through this and it can't get back up in the hive. Some people argue that they like to have solid bottoms like this one. This is for that 08 frame. A solid bottom because if you have a solid bottom and the bees are going in and out, then basically there's no way for the air to escape except the entrance and they're in there fanning the hive with their wings and it makes a flow. Uh, I don't know. I'm in Texas. I like to have the wire bottom because it's just... Some people say it doesn't allow you to have it flow. Some people think the whole thing's flowing anyway. It's just a matter of opinion. All right. Uh, we're back to feeders, though. This is another feeder I built years ago. It basically can sit on top of a hive. It's got some boxes, uh, holes in the bottom. But basically, I built these floaty things so that if you come and fill these compartments with sugar water and it's just a bare bottom thing and if you paint something called anchor seal um no not anchor seal spar varnish spar varnish which you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot it'll be waterproof and I built these and you put them in here and they float the bees can go in between them and they can just get their fill of food right there so that's one of three options you can use a a jar or the black little frame feeder or you can do something like this. There's different ways to do it. It just depends on how you want to do it. Now, screen bottom wires we talked about. We talked about uh, the cells and why the configuration is important. One last thing I want to tell you. This is another type of hive that you're going to be seeing a lot of when you talk to me in person. This is called a nucleus. Or this short we call it a nuke for short. Basically, I will be grafting soon and I will be forcing my bees to make queens. 
and then I will go through each hive and I will pull out two frames of larvae, two frames of bees, and two frames or a frame or two of food. And then I will stick in here five frames of that. And then I will stick in some queen cells. And they will not have a queen in here. And they will be very angry until I put those queen cells in there and then they know that they're going to be making a new queen. And then I will let it sit in my queen yard out in Millican for about a week. And once those queens emerge, they will mate out there and then they are good to go. And once I see them laying eggs in here. Now, what you're going to get from me is basically five frames full of bees and a queen and food and everything. These boxes are very hard to make. I really don't let people take them home because um, I only have ten of them. Or so. I have cardboard options where you can take the cardboard box home, but since most people build their own stuff, a lot of people have said they already have the hives, they just need the bees. That's why I just give you the frames. And a lot of you will have this if you order a kit from Daydant, or you may have the Wax Foundation as your preference. So you can bring me these back after you use them um, and replace them with this. It's whatever you want to do. But if you need a box, uh, let me know. I'll bring you a cardboard box or we can uh, let you borrow one of these if you're local and I know where you are. Uh, but yeah, basically a starter hive is five frames and you have to get a bigger box because these bees will outgrow these five frames in a matter of weeks in the full blown harvest of the spring. So just remember we have bottoms, we have deeps, we have supers, and the way the frames are made all have reason. There's always enough bee space. There's, if there's too much, we don't like that. If there's too little, the bees don't like that. There's different ways to feed them. There's different ways to store them in the winter and the fall. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Um, my website doesn't exist because we've never made one. But I have a woodworking business called Dart Woodworks. It stands for Darren and Rebecca's twins. Dart as in like you're at a beer hall when you're throwing a dart. Dartwoodworks.com. Um, that's the simplest one I have. And you can email me through that. We may come up with an email that says Dart Bee Works or something, but not yet. So send me an email if you have any questions. But basically, I think I've covered everything you need to know about why you want to use if you want to use plasticell or if you want to use wax foundation. Why you want to use an 8 frame, why you want to use a 10 frame. Basically, it's all about how much you want to carry around. And what you will be getting from me in May or so. The bees are a little slow this year. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Um, so some of you may have my phone number. You can call me if you want to. But thank you for watching. We will do more videos, and I'll probably try to make this a little bit better video of this particular type as we go on. This is my first attempt. But we will, as we go into the hives and I start doing checking and starting splitting, I'll try to get videos of those and see how we do. Anyways, thanks for watching. And thanks to my wife who's pushing the button on the iPad. Love you, sweetie.